Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Purcell. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're all recovering and getting into the routine from a long and extended holiday and New Year break. Well, last week, my video was on the top five tips to ensure good health. I talked about eating right, drinking enough water, exercise, being your own boss, and sleep. And so today, I want to expand on the sleep piece because getting your Z's is so very important. And really, as humans, we are unique because only we use sleep for restoring mind, body, and spirit. And modern life can really throw a monkey wrench into natural sleep cycles for us. So 30% of Americans get seven hours of sleep or less each night. And if we're talking about single moms, that number goes up to a whopping 47%. So that's right. Almost half of all single moms are getting seven hours or less of sleep each night. So what is good sleep? Good sleep is uninterrupted, where you sleep restfully through the whole night. And there are extended periods of dream sleep so that you're actively dreaming. And the benefits of sleep include sharp mental focus, feeling really fresh in your mind, abundant energy. Hmm. It looks like I am sideways. Let's see if we could change this a little bit. That's what the folks are saying. But now I'm going to have to hold this camera. It might be a little wobbly, but feeling fresh in your mind for good sleep, positive moods, and being consistently alert. And I know that some of you are thinking, oh my goodness, like what if I could actually feel like that on a regular basis? Well, my answer to you is that you can. And it's, you know, when you are sleeping regularly, you get to reap all of these amazing benefits. So good sleep is also connected to hormonal rhythms and helps regulate appetite. And this is a really important point because inadequate sleep can lead to increased appetite, which means you actually eat more, and a higher BMI, which stands for body mass index. So people who go to bed regularly after midnight have a higher BMI than people who don't. Yeah, think about that. So I briefly mentioned this little mantra in my live broadcast last week, and I want to say it again. So what I say is down with the chickens, up with the roosters. And I didn't just pull that out of thin air. Actually, it's based in science, and it's based in the science um, called the circadian rhythm. And I want to talk to you a little bit about what the circadian rhythm is today so that you understand why um, I'm suggesting the health tips at the end of this live chat and why they work so well. So the circadian rhythm that our bodies are programmed to follow is based on light. So in the early morning hours of dawn, our brain senses the light frequencies that are coming with the rising sun and starts to secrete certain hormones. It's secreting cortisol, serotonin to help us wake up and feel refreshed and get going with our day. And then right around mid-morning as it progresses, cortisol kind of declines, serotonin is still on the rise, and many of you are familiar with serotonin because serotonin is that feel-good, happy hormone that um, some of the most commonly prescribed medications like Prozac and Lexapro and Zoloft, all of those are trying to keep serotonin around in the body longer to make us feel better, happier more content with our lives. So as the morning progresses, cortisol drops off, but serotonin comes up, your body temperature comes up, your metabolism comes up, and that infuses you with energy. And then as the day goes on, later afternoon, early evening, 
the metabolism starts to slow down a little bit and hormone production drops and then we get ready to wind down or get into that wind down mode, powering down towards the end of the day. And the, as the setting sun frequency comes, your body starts converting serotonin into melatonin. And melatonin is the hormone that makes us feel sleepy and helps us fall asleep more easily so that we can get to bed. Melatonin then secretes this whole cascade after midnight that converts into growth hormone and oxytocin and all of this amazing cellular repair happens while we're sleeping. And then, of course, the whole cycle starts again at 4 a.m., so I don't want to bore you with a lot of the circadian rhythm science, but here's the bottom line. We're programmed by the light, right? Here's the takeaway message here. So an increase in light signals your body to wake up and starts producing the wake-up hormones. A decrease in light or the setting sun frequencies signal your body to uh, secrete sleep-inducing hormones, Okay, so I want you to remember this because a lot of what happens with modern life is that it goes against this cycle. If you start to think about us having lights on all the time at night or having screens, right? So we're having um, our iPads or our iPhones, these lovely devices that you and I are communicating on right now on at night. Well, those start to suppress the release of the sleepy time hormones. And they're stimulating the release of the wake up hormones, which is how you start to see how our sleep gets really messed up and our bodies get confused. So I want to talk now about five healthy habits to help you improve your sleep. And these are really lifestyle measures that you can take to enhance the quality of the sleep that you're getting. And they help your body to just relax overall. So rule one, what are you using your bedroom for? Your bedroom really should only be used for sex and sleep. That's it. You you're, shouldn't be reading in there, texting, watching the news, checking out other things off screens, or watching TV. That's not what bedrooms are for. They're for sleeping. Number two. Go to sleep at the same time every night. Oh, I just had someone ask me about natural remedies for sleep, so I can talk about that. Yeah, so let me go on to number two, which is going to bed at the same time every single night. And, you know, kids do so good with routine, and guess what? So do adults. It doesn't mean because you're a grown-up that now you don't need routine I mean, this is just part of being human. So once you start going to bed, let's say at 9.30 every night, you turn your lights down, it's quiet, you're not doing anything stimulating, you're setting the stage to easily and effortlessly fall asleep, let's say by 10.30. So it's just those nice habits. Number three, making your bedroom as dark and quiet as possible. And this goes back to the whole science of the circadian rhythm. If you've got light in your bedroom, it's confusing the signaling of your body and your brain for what hormones to produce. And number four, stop any major mental activity. So really two hours before you need to go to bed, just shut down all the work stuff. It's not time for work right? There's a time for everything. There's a time for work and there's a time for no work. You know, because you want to send the message to your body that it's time to relax. So like watching the news, if you know that politics and news and terrible things upset you, disturb you, give you bad dreams, it's not a good idea to watch those things or get involved with them right before your sleep time. But some really good things to do would be meditation. I'm a big fan. There's lots of sleep invoking meditations, things to help relax the body and mind, deep breathing exercises, some gentle stretching, some restorative poses. Mm -hmm. 
And then really no food two hours before bed. Now, this is a general rule. People suffering with gastric reflux, the rule really is two to three hours before bed because that can cause more gastric reflux and then you'll have more problems with having to prop yourself up on pillows and that's going to interfere with sleep. People who have blood sugar issues, then what you need to do probably is eat a very light snack, maybe half of an apple and some nuts or something an hour before bed because sometimes blood sugar crashes can interfere with sleep too. So again, you know, it's, it's a generalization, no food two hours before bed, but then there are little nuances for, for different people depending on their needs. And I do want to say something about alcohol. I think a lot of people are using alcohol kind of as a sedative, a mind relaxer, helping you to, you know, unwind from your day as a coping mechanism, stress relief, and it will make you a little bit sleepy. But here's the problem with alcohol and why it's not a good idea to use for sleep is because alcohol gets metabolized by your liver between the times of 2 and 4 a.m. And the liver is really trying to crank through that alcohol at that point in time and process it. And that generally causes waking. So it's going to cause disturbed sleep. And it's also going to, I've seen it cause night, flat, uh, night sweats, hot flashes, and then excessively dry mouth, which cuts down in your overall sleep time. So initially it may seem like a good idea, but really not for getting good quality of sleep. You know, and then um, the comment from Zia is, you know, what about using some of these other natural things to sleep? So generally, um, natural medicine and mother's pantry has a lot to offer to help us relax and unwind. So we can start with the minerals like calcium magnesium, which is soothing. We can then segue into some herbs like you mentioned here, kava, skullcap, um, I like lemon balm, passion flower, um, do sleepy time teas, and then you can also do some non-alcohol tinctures of those to help the brain and body relax. And then there are like the um, neurotransmitter balancers, things like 5-HTP, GABA, and I see you mentioned here L-theanine. L-theanine uh, is anti-anxiety. It kind of helps take the edge off. I've seen lavender also help. Um, lavender is an herb. Generally better for women though, not as good for men, um, the lavender. But L-theanine works for everybody and that's a derivative of green tea um, that's anxiolytic. And then you did mention here melatonin. So there's a role for melatonin supplementation, um, and it's for people who have that disrupted circadian rhythm. So let's say you've done a lot of travel, changing time zones, like not good about getting into bed before midnight, like circadian rhythm really um, interfered with, then you can use melatonin to help reset. So you always want to use melatonin at night, never during the day, because again, it's, it helps naturally reset the um, circadian rhythm. Yeah, and then and you don't have to use it long term. You could use it for 10 days, 20 days, 30 days, and then generally the body starts producing. Again, the brain produces melatonin and also serotonin is converted into melatonin. Oh, I had a question about sleep medications here. Um, the thing about long-term use of sleep medications is that they're habituating. The body becomes dependent on them. Um, and they tend not to work as well, so you have to go up in potency with the sleep meds. We're talking about pharmaceuticals here. And then what happens is, is you're really not getting good restorative sleep, good quality sleep over time. So, you know, if you're on them short term, that's okay. You really want to work with um, an alternative practitioner or a naturopathic doctor to kind of figure out what's really going on with you and see if you can address it naturally. Um, and then you slowly weed down off them. But people who have been on sleep medications, you know, if we're talking about upwards of 15, 20, 25 years, it is, it's hard to get off them. Um, but you can start with these five tips that I talked about today because maybe there are some lifestyle things that you're doing that are interfering 
with your circadian rhythm and interfering with, um, with that whole light balance. So again, I'm just going to cover my five tips again for you. So set your bedroom aside for sex and sleeping, and that's it, tip number one. Two, go to bed at the same time every single night. Three, make your bedroom as dark and quiet as possible. Four, shut off the mind motor. No more mental wheel going there. Turn it off. Help yourself by, you know, not exposing yourself to anything stimulating that triggers it to go. And then no food two hours before bedtime. Yeah, you're so welcome, everyone, for the tips. I'm glad that you stopped by today. I'll be here next Wednesday. Um, I'm committed to sharing tips that I know work and tips that I use with you um, so that slowly over time you will start to hear my voice in your ears and we can all start making small changes um, and get you on the path to better health. So I want to end with a little quote here from Dr. Mark Hyman. He says, if your friends have healthy habits you are more likely to as well. So get healthy friends. And that's really why I'm doing these Facebook Live um, meet and greets is because I like to say that you become who you hang around. And so let's all hang out some more and sooner than later, we'll all be drinking green tea together. All right, you take care. Have a great week. I'll see you next week.